Well, we got to shift gears because Tuesday's hotter than expected inflation report stoked fears of a more aggressive rate hike schedule from the Federal Reserve. And then as interest rates continue to climb, so does the U.S. dollar. With the U.S. dollar index, the so-called Dixie recently hitting a two decade high, the implications of a strong greenback are far and wide. And let's break it down with ING effects strategist Francesco Pesol. And uh, let me let's start with the dollar here. Uh, we are at multi decades highs strengthening versus uh, the euro versus is the yen itself going back to the 90s. What are we to make of this? Well, we know the drivers of this, obviously. Um, we've seen uh, the Fed being hawkish, and that has been kind of the first engine of dollar strength uh, over the past few quarters. But then, obviously, the, the, the energy crisis in Europe, and that appears to be, at the moment, the biggest driver, simply because growth differentials are becoming more relevant for uh, for fx and uh, when you look at euro dollar even though um the gap between the fed and the ecb has uh, uh, closed a bit and euro dollar just looking at the two-year trade dif uh, rate differential should be uh, trading higher well the energy story in in, in europe and the, how it's affecting a large part of the world uh, and in a way is uh, kind of keeping markets um very reluctant to Jump away from uh, from uh, U.S. assets to uh, European assets. All this is really at the moment what's what's driving the strength. Uh, and let me ask you about Asia then, because we've seen a tremendous weakening of the yen, not only against the uh, by, against the U.S. dollar, but other currencies as well. And uh, we've seen we've seen this before. We know how this movie ends potentially. Um, a lot of times at the end of these uh, moves, there is a huge rush into the yen as the uh, markets price an eventual move by their central bank. We have interest rate differentials. We also have haven flows. Um, should we be concerned about the move into the yen now and any potential reaction by the BOJ, the Bank of Japan? Yeah, we think the markets are probably underestimating the risk of FX interventions by um, the Bank of Japan. If you look at the implied volatility on uh, dollar yen, uh, this should be trading much higher if markets were seriously considering um, the, the higher risk of FX interventions. Uh, today was really interesting because the yen had a, um, basically, sorry, the Bank of Japan spoke um, with uh, traders and dealers and asked for a price check. And that's uh, normally what happens before an intervention. Now, this could be um, simply a way to test the market. And we did see a dollar yen trade lower after the, uh, that news this morning. But surely the, the risk of, of interventions are, are quite high um, at this point. The, the, the matter with interventions is always uh, if they work or not. And uh, if markets potential is not looking at the risk of BOJ intervening that seriously, uh, there's also a chance that they are um, expecting, in a way, FX interventions, but they're not expecting them to work out that well. Well, and let me uh, stick in Asia there for a second. I'm looking at the Wi-Fi Interactive. I'm looking at the yen versus the Chinese yuan, and it is down 24% over the last two years. A longer-term chart shows we just broke through uh, what could have been support there. Uh, difficult to see on these uh, scaling on the scaling here, but nevertheless, what are the odds that the Chinese central bank, the PBOC, has to do an intervention against the yen or even the U.S. dollar as well? Well, when it comes to the BOC, it's a different story because the uh, PBC obviously uh, issues every um, every day. It's fixing, and this is the way, the preferred way of, uh, in a way, managing its currency. Um, and surely they have had to accept a weaker yuan on the back of lockdowns and uh, obviously the, the picture, the economic picture in in China that has deteriorated quite a lot. Um, we think uh, there's. The, this, when it comes to the yuan, there's always this fine line um, between having a strong currency um, to uh, and try and, and insulate China from, from high energy prices and having a weak currency to support growth. At the moment, it looks like uh, the PBOC might um, tolerate a slightly weaker currency to support growth, um, but it's much more uncertainty. And obviously, the fact that the PBOC intervenes on a daily basis means it's, it's a little harder uh, to, to predict a larger FX interventions. 
Well, and let's get to uh, some emerging markets, some true emerging markets. You could take, um, for instance, uh, some of the South American market, markets from the Argentine peso to the Brazilian real. Uh, we've seen some of these under pressure recently. What's your take on EM? Well, EM is, is naturally going to be struggling in an environment where the Fed continues to hike aggressively. Um, this is um, just a natural consequence that we've seen it throughout history. And uh, at the moment, I think, unless um, until we get to the point where the Fed truly starts to um, sense the signals that it's pivoting towards a less hawkish stance, EM currencies will remain uh, under a certain degree of pressure. And uh, in, really, in order to see some uh, some big recovery there, you need to see the dollar uh, starting to, to, to come lower. Then you have local stories, and that's um, going to be quite relevant. I'm just thinking of the Brazilian real, uh, obviously, with uh, with the election story, and that's a major risk event. So it's a combination of these two factors. I think we think into year-end, uh, emerging market currencies still don't look too too good. Uh, we have to leave it there, but appreciate you stopping by. ING FX strategist Francesco Pesole.